Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today, I'm going to show you how to work offline with your NJ3 machines. Without further ado, let's get into it. NJ have finally decided to implement this piece of functionalities that we were all waiting for. Unfortunately, the implementation is not exactly the way we would have liked it. Now, to work offline, you will need to use uh, their proprietary software. Uh, and so that is the reason why I'm not particularly happy with the implementation. Uh, but it seems working OK. And so if you can cope with that, that would be simply an extra step to your typical workflow. Now, the first thing you will need to do is to update the, both the software and the firmware. Luckily for us, uh, Nages make it very simple to do compared to other brands. And so now if you're using uh, Nages software in default, uh, then you will most likely be at their latest uh, version because usually uh, it's doing a check when it's initializing. But if you are not, all you will need to do is to launch the application. And once you do that, uh, if your software is not updated, you will be prompt to basically go ahead and download uh, the update. So in my case, I'm already there. So I'll just double click on the con port so that I can connect to the machine. So the machine will home and now we are ready. Um, so in a similar way, uh, you will most, most likely be prompt to uh, update the firmware. If you feel like you are not uh, to the latest firmware, just go over here and click on firmware update. Here you will see there is this green check. Um, and so if it doesn't say that you're up to date, then of course go ahead and update to the latest version. Once your software is updated, uh, the major change that you will notice in the interface is this extra button with the down arrow, which says send to the device. So this will basically send or upload uh, your file to the machine, but will not start the machine for execution. So how do you go about working with uh, this new functionality and therefore working offline? So if you are using uh, the Neges software, like your day-to-day -day software, then you will need to do nothing more than simply uh, prepare your file. So you will either upload your picture or get something from the photo galleries or just upload your custom file in uh, G-code or CAD uh, file. And once you prepare all the parameters, uh, instead of clicking Start, you will click on Send. So this is the only difference there. Now, if you are using another software, uh, GRBL type of software like uh, Laser GRBL or Lightbarn, then there, there will be this extra couple of steps in order to be able to work offline. And so that is, that is exactly what I'm about to show you because anyway, the last part will be valid for both uh, workflow. So I have a file already here in uh, uh, Light Barn. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and I will show you later when we uh, try to upload this into uh, the NGS software is that you want to make sure to um, locate, position the file, the project where you want uh, relative to the absolute coordinate system. Um, and so, for example, this is something very small. I can go ahead and decide to uh, position it at 50 millimeter right and 50 millimeter up, okay? So once you are ready with the layers and everything, if you want, you can also preview how long the, it takes. So it's, this is almost two minutes of execution time. And here, this is the extra step that you will need to do. Um, be careful to where the origin is. As you can see here, I'm in absolute coordinate system and I'm not using the uh, selection origin. So the origin is basically located to the machine's origin. And so here I will need to click on save G code. Now this will, uh, prompt me to give a name. Now, the important thing is that we will need to work this file onto the NGS software, which accepts only G-code in .nc uh, file extension, as you can see over here. 
So you can uh, basically type your name and then to uh, manually type in .nc, okay? So once you're done with that, you will click on save. Now, in my case, I already had the file. I can overwrite that. So once that is done, you can go back to your Noje application. And uh, now you can either come over to the CNC tab and then to click on open CNC. But what I rather like to do is to uh, go over to where my file is saved and then to drag it and drop it into the application. Now, this is uh, the major change. And this is something very important that you need to uh, keep into account. So you can rather keep the origin, so nothing will change on your uh, G code file, or you can process the image. Now, I will rather suggest you to keep the origin. And that is because if, as I've showed you, this is a multi-layer project. So you can see here up to the layers, I have four layers set up for the project. And I have different parameters, both power and speed, because some will be for cutting, some will be for line engraving and fill engraving with various powers. So if you have a multi-layer or a multi-parameter project like this one, you will need to keep uh, definitely the origin. So you will need to, to choose a region. So will, this will not alter anything. However, if it's a single layer uh, and you want the option to uh, position uh, the project on your machine and also to override the power and speed setting, you can go ahead and to choose process. So in my case, I want to go for choose a region. So you will see that this is basically located in the exact position as it was here in uh, Lightbarn. Um, and so I'm basically ready to go. Now, once that is done, again, you are not going to click on uh, start, but you are going to send it to the device. So you will click on it, it will take some time, and then it will give you OK. So here, now you will need to go to the machine in order to be able to start the offline job. And so we'll do that right away. OK, so now uh, the cool thing about working offline is that you can uh, unplug the uh, data cable, which I have over here. As you can see, I removed it. You can even power down the machine, OK? Uh, now, power down the machine, of, of course, you're not going to be able to work. Uh, the point is that the file that you have uploaded is going to be saved in flash memory. So it's going to be stored into the uh, microcontroller. And so that means that as long as you don't override it, that is going to persist in the memory. And so you can use it as many times as you want. For example, this could be cool if you want to add a logo, your logo to your project. So you could keep this piece of functionality offline. And every time when you finish um, a project, you can basically click and repeat the execution of that particular logo. OK, so now let me show you how to work. Let's first power up the machine. Now, in order to work, you will first of all need to be in Nege mode. In Nege mode, uh, you see here we have uh, two LIDs, okay? One is red, the other one is yellow, and the third one is green. So in Nege mode is when you are uh, with both the red and the yellow LID uh, on. So in order to uh, cycle through the mode, the J and URBL mode, you will need to click two seconds. And now, basically, we are in uh, uh, Nege mode. Now, once you do this, you click once. And this is going to frame the area where the project is going to come out. OK? So now you can take your piece of wood, OK, your sheet of material. Again, click to frame it. OK, we are pretty much there. Now, here you need to be careful. Basically, you click once, and that is going to frame. OK, if you click once more while it is framing, that is going to start. 
So you don't want to do that accidentally. So if you want to frame it over, let it finish to do the framing operation, like now, it's not framing. So now if I click again, still is framing. And now let's start, simply click. All right, so as you can see, it is over. So now we can have a look to our beautiful keychain. And there we go. This is our keychain. So as you can see, it was very simple. And now, if I would have liked to repeat the project, all I'll need to do is to click again. This will frame. And if I want to start, just click on once more and it starts executing the project. All right, so as you can see, uh, it is fairly simple to use. Now, there are two reasons why I don't like the implementation. Now, the first one is because you need this extra step in your workflow. It is not terrible, but it would have been nice to have the implementation working directly in GRBL mode, that is with either like Barn or GRBL or whichever other piece of software you have that you're using to control your machine. The second thing is that it would have also been nice to have the way to send the project for execution and then you can unplug your cable if you want to without having to have this extra step where once you send it, you will need to go to your machine in order to physically start the uh, operation. Now, uh, there is one side note to all of this, and that is size limitation. Now, as I said, the file is going to be saved in flash memory. Um, sometime it, there can be some additional uh, type of memory which sits next to the MCU uh, chipset. The fact that you are storing in flash memory, you know that there will be a memory limitation there. In the testing that I've been doing, I haven't found no problem. And as far as I could test, I believe that most of you will not, will have no problems for most uh, application. However, just for you to see, I have prepared a file, which is a quite large file under my test. So you can see large project size. This is a 71 megabytes file. So I'm going to open it with the Nagest software. Now again, it's going to prompt you whether or not you should keep the origin. So go for keep origin. But as you can see, this is basically going to take the entire, almost the entire area. And if you click on send, you get the error. It says that is oversized. And so with this test, we find out that we have, have a 4.2 megabytes of available flash memory or whatever kind of uh, storage memory we got into, into the main board. Here you can see that we have this kind of limitation. Now, I'm sure that if you encounter this problem, it will only happen with images because they have the most uh, details there. So it's the longest G code to write line by line every time the laser has to go on and off depending on the mode. Now, this is a large image. Uh, in theater mode with, I think it was a 0.1 millimeters of line interval. And so uh, that is why it is so large in file size. But other than that, for most other projects, and especially projects like the one that I showed you, no matter how big it is, there should be absolutely uh, not a problem. Okay. Now, as I said, you will be able to work it out also with your other software. So if you have a uh, laser GRBL, you can work out your image here. And once you're done, you will go over to file and then a uh, quick save and you can save in .nc uh, format once again. And this is pretty much all.
So I hope you liked uh, the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any comment, leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now.